Okay, so we have our brioche dough and we put it in the refrigerator to chill it down so that we could shape it more easily. And so I'm gonna take it out of the container. It's okay if it comes out in chunks. Okay, so I've got our brioche dough and the first thing you wanna do is you wanna divide it. And so we're gonna shape brioche tete and to shape brioche tete, we need to divide them into small pieces, and I divide mine into 50 gram pieces. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna cut a strip of dough like this, and then I'm gonna sort of eyeball what I think is 50 grams, and then I'm gonna weigh it. And then if it's a couple of grams over or under, that's fine. And I'm just gonna keep going on. I'm gonna divide 10 pieces of dough at 50 grams each. I'm also going to divide pieces a little smaller at 25 grams. And it's okay if the dough is sticking to your, your bench knife and is sticky. It's cold enough so that you should be able to handle it pretty well. Okay, and then this last piece, what I'm going to do is we're going to shape this large piece into a loaf pan, but first we're going to shape our brioche tete. And to do that, what you wanna do is make sure that your hands are really floured so that the dough doesn't stick to them. And you're going to take the dough, and I usually like to have the smooth surface facing up, and you're going to cup your hand, and you're gonna roll it against the surface like this. And the pressure of your hand is going to create a ball and see how the ball is sort of sticking to the work surface. That's where I use my bench knife and I really scoop up under it and then I round it again. And so this is the beginning of shaping the brioche tete. And so we're just gonna set that ball aside and move on to the next ball. And again, really using a lot of pressure on the surface and it's that pressure that helps pop the dough up into your hand as you're making a circular motion. And then if you get a little dough on the surface, just scrape it up and keep moving on. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two hands just to expedite. And my two hands are basically going towards each other as I'm rounding. see this one's starting to stick so I'm just gonna take my bench knife and scoop right under it and I'm gonna flour my hands some more if you notice I'm not really flouring the surface I'm really just flouring my hands All right. for the smaller pieces these are going to form a loaf called a non tear and I'm gonna round these too See, I'm just sort of setting them aside as I round them to let them rest a little bit. Okay. Now, onto this big piece of dough. Ideally, I want this big piece of dough to weigh about one kilo, and so I'm gonna check the weight of it. And you can see there's a little piece of butter that's left over from the mixing. When I see a little piece of butter like this, I'm just gonna take it out of the dough because what will happen if you leave it in the dough is that it will evaporate and it will create an air pocket and you don't want that when you're baking the brioche. So I'm gonna weigh this. It's about 1200 grams. I'm gonna cut off 200 grams. And then what I'm going to do with this big piece of dough is I'm gonna start shaping it. And so I'm gonna sort of deflate it because there's still some air in the dough. And if it starts to stick, what you wanna do is really get under it so it's not sticking to your work surface and just dust the work surface. So I'm gonna flatten this dough out to about the size of my pan. 
And then I'm gonna start to roll it up jelly roll style. And I'm sort of rolling it and I'm sealing it with the palm of my hand at the same time. So I've got this nice log and now I'm gonna deflate it and sort of square up the edges so it's the size of my pan. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gently, this is a non-stick pan, so it probably doesn't need any kind of spray, but just for some security, I'm just gonna very gently spray the pan. And then I'm gonna put this piece of dough in the pan and I wanna sort of flatten it out so that it's nice and even, and it will proof very evenly this way, and you'll get a nice domed loaf of bread. And this is a nine by five inch pan. And then we're going to let this proof for about three hours. And when it's proofing, what we really wanna do is we wanna watch it, but we wanna cover it so that the surface doesn't get dried out. And now I'm going to move on to the small balls. And I'm gonna take this other pan, and this is an eight by four inch pan. I'm gonna lightly spray it. And I'm just gonna place the balls into the bottom of it. I have the non-tear loaf shaped, and I've got 10 pieces of dough. Each piece of dough weighs about 25 grams, and I've got them in a row of two each, and I've got a total of 10. And these will also proof for about three hours. And I'm gonna set these aside while I finish shipping the brioche tete. Okay, so a brioche tete has a little head on it. The word tete in French means head. And so we're gonna finish shaping these balls so that they have another little head on the top of them. And then we're gonna put them in, these are brioche tete molds. And we're gonna spray these molds so that they don't stick to them. And I've got two, four, six, eight. So just very gently spray them, not too much, because there's butter in the brioche. And then what you're going to do is flour your hands and then you're going to take the ball and put it on its side and sort of roll it out like this. And then once it's about three inches long, you're going to take the back side of your hand and you're going to make sort of a sawing motion about two thirds into the dough. So you're going to sort of saw it like this. And this is going to sort of look like a bowling pin. And once you have this sort of bowling pin, you're going to smush it down. You're going to sort of work it down like that. And then you've got the beginning of your brioche tete. You're gonna use your two index fingers, dip them in flour, and you're gonna push into that indentation and really get under that little head. And dip your fingers in flour again, and then just keep working the dough around until you're really under that little head. And then that is your brioche a tete, and then you're gonna put it into the, the pan so it can start proofing and I'm gonna shape some more. So again, you're gonna take it on its side and roll it until it's about three inches long, and then you're gonna take the back side of your hand and about two thirds of the way across, you're gonna sort of go back and forth into the dough. Don't cut the dough off, but you're just gonna do a rolling motion so that you're sort of shaping something that looks like a bowling pin, and then you're gonna take your fingers and smush this dough down. Flour your fingers if the dough starts to stick to them, and then you're gonna take your index fingers and just go work your way around the dough. And if the dough sticks to the surface, just a nice light dusting of flour. And then this can go into its pan. And so these are three different ways that you can shape brioche dough.